This is the Galaxy S20 Plus from Samsung, a brilliant phone with some really impressive features. A proper flagship if I might say so. So how does it compare when pit against our 2019 premium flagship C4E award winner, the iPhone 11 Pro Max? That is what we are going to find out in today's video. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and as always, if you do end up liking what you see with this video, subscribe and please consider turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get started. So guys, this might be a bit obvious, but we have two very large phones here. And even though the S20 Plus is quite a bit taller, it happens to be thinner and narrower. Not just that, it's also the lighter of the two. The 11 Pro Max, it weighs in at around 225 grams, while the S20 Plus, it's a good 40 grams lighter. And 40 grams is not something you don't notice. It's very much noticeable when you pick these phones up. And now, neither of these phones are meant to be used single-handed. But if you really have to, then the narrower S20 Plus with its curved glass back, it feels a bit easier to wield, much more so than the boxier 11 Pro Max. As far as the similarities go, both phones do have glass sandwich designs held together by a metal frame. On Samsung's end, we've got Corning's Gorilla Glass 6 protecting the display in the back, while Apple has chosen to go with a specially made version of Corning's glass. And with Samsung, it's held together by a stainless steel frame. The design, you know, we are all very familiar with the contrasty reflective camera bump and frosted uh, matte finish uh, to the back of the 11 Pro Max. No, neither phone does offer much in terms of grip and that's where our sponsors dbrand come in dbrand offers perfectly cut skins for a lot of popular phones including yes you guessed it right the s20 plus and the iphone 11 pro max you can mix and match to find the skin of your choice and to know more do check out dbrand using the link in the description below so now coming back like i said both designs have similarities but they also happen to differ in certain ways while you could like the sleek and lightweight s20 plus build I personally do, I wouldn't fault you if you wanted to go with the iPhone 11 Pro Max here, which does come with its own advantages. Like for example, both phones do have IP68 certification, but the iPhone 11 Pro can stay in water more than twice the depth and for twice as long as the S20 Plus. So there are pros and cons to both sides and this at the end of it all, it is something that's personal preference. So use a poll, make a choice. Now turning both phones around, we can see that the larger footprint of the S20 Plus is a direct result of a larger display. 6.7 inches versus 6.5 inches on the 11 Pro Max. Apple is calling this their Super Retina XDR display. This is 2688 by 1242 uh, pixels. This also happens to be made by Samsung. If you compare these two AMOLED panels side by side, it's really hard to tell them apart. They both look excellent with pitch black darks and vibrant colors, and both of them can get really bright too. Of course, on paper, the S20 Plus has a higher resolution, Quad HD Plus, but in reality, no matter which one of these two you end up with, you're gonna be really happy with the media experience. Of course, one thing that does set them apart is the notch. Now on the iPhone, we've got this wide notch up top because that's where all the hardware for Face ID is. And of course, that comes along with the 12 megapixel selfie camera. On the S20 Plus, we have the Infinity O panel. Basically, we get this tiny little punch hole that holds a 10 megapixel selfie snapper. It's way less distracting while watching movies. And aesthetics aside, there is another key difference here. Use the S20 Plus for a while and it just starts to feel smoother. Almost like One UI 2.0 has become faster and more responsive than iOS. Now, that's not really true. The reason you feel that way is because there is this 120Hz refresh rate on this display. Samsung is calling it their Dynamic AMOLED 2X. 2X since the screen refresh rate is twice the normal 60Hz. The Galaxy S20 Plus at Full HD Plus resolution supports the higher refresh rate along with a 240Hz touch sampling rate that makes the whole device feel a lot more responsive. Apple's been using 120Hz touch sampling for a while, but the refresh rate, it remains at 60Hz. So with regards to the display, this is gonna be S20 Plus all the way. Now coming to the internals, we've got the 7nm A13 Bionic on the iPhone 11 Pro Max going up against the Snapdragon 865 for certain variants of the Galaxy S20 Plus, the Exynos 990 for certain other variants uh, sold in other parts of the world. Now, all these three are flagship SOCs. So when it comes to real-world performance, there's not a lot between them. 
right from launching apps or jumping between apps or even scrolling through menus and home screens and Twitter feeds, there isn't any major difference in speed. Of course, the 120Hz does give a feeling of increased fluidity to the entire user interface. Animations appear to be a little bit smoother, but the biggest change, the biggest difference between these two phones, you'd notice it when you're playing a game. Now, we did play a couple of games that did support high refresh rates, and especially in something with something like Modern Combat, the aiming, the flicking, it just feels a lot smoother, a lot natural, a lot easier. So in terms of gaming, I feel the S20 Plus has a clear edge. Although the A13 Bionic, it definitely has the more powerful GPU, uh, especially when you compare it to something like the G77 MP11 from the Exynos 990. But the overall experience, it doesn't matter how powerful your GPU is, it matters how you use it. And I feel Samsung's done the better job of utilizing it. Now, of course, before we can wrap the performance segment up, let's take a look at the memory side of things. The S20 Plus is available with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of UFS 3.0 storage here. We also have support for microSD expansion through a hybrid slot. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the iPhone 11 Pro Max has 4 gigs of RAM, but RAM works very differently when it comes to iOS, so it's apples to oranges, no pun intended. Uh, the storage, that works pretty similarly. The iPhone 11 Pro Max starts with a measly 64 gigs. Apple does offer 256 and 512 gig storage options. Now here are a few points to note. 4 gigs of RAM uh, might seem too small, a little too little for the iPhone, but it is more than enough for iOS. Also, Apple uses a special style of storage that is comparable to NVMe SSDs from desktop setups. Basically, what it means is that the iPhone 11 Pro Max is fast really fast, both from a storage as well as a SoC perspective. However, since the S20 Plus provides a smoother experience thanks to that display and of course, also which also leads to a better gaming experience, due to that, when it comes to specs and performance, I'm going to have to call this one a tie. Uh, and if you're a gamer, I'm going to have to go with the S20 Plus. Now, as far as the battery side of things are, is concerned, the S20 Plus sports a 4500mAh battery compared to 3969 on the 11 Pro Max. But when it comes to battery life, the 11 Pro Max does do a little better here, thanks to all the optimizations on iOS 13.3. Even in our drain test, the, I the iPhone 11, despite having a smaller sized battery, managed to outlast many other Android devices with higher capacity batteries inside them. That said, both these phones are hard to kill with a single day of use, even if it's intense use. So you're pretty much covered on the battery front. And when it comes to charging speeds, the iPhone, it maxes out at 18 watts, while the S20 Plus goes up to 25 watts on USB PD 3.0. And both phones do support wireless charging. It's Qi wireless charging, the same standard. It's a universal standard, there's nothing proprietary here. But the iPhone 11 Pro Max, it maxes out at 7.5 watts. The S20 Plus can do twice that, 15 watts. And on top of that, the S20 Plus can also reverse wireless charge, so if you want to top up a pair of AirPods Pros or something, Apple's not going to let you, but Samsung will. Okay, so let's move on to a kind of controversial topic in today's, in today's comparison. It's iOS 13.3 versus One UI 2.0 based on Android 10. Now, I don't really want to get into a iOS versus Android, uh, Android thing here. I understand both these OSs have their own pros and cons. Uh, now, instead, I'm just going to uh, point out some of the features I found most useful while using these two phones. Starting off with iOS 13, we have Apple Arcade at 99 rupees a month. This is a whole new way of looking at mobile gaming. I've always hated the freemium model of games, especially because of the uh, all the microtransactions that it brings with it. With Apple Arcade, it feels like this is a new step towards better mobile gaming. Also, some games come with controller support, which is... Quite a nice addition if you're serious about gaming. On the One UI side of things, I like how Samsung is focused on single-handed usage. From the settings menu to the notification shade to even the multitasking menu, it's evident everywhere. Also, Samsung Pay has always been one of my favorite features uh, and that's present on the S20 Plus too. Back to iOS, it's pretty smooth, it's pretty consistent. It's the same thing we've been saying about iOS for a long time now and that's Still the iOS you either love or hate. Ultimately, both these phones, they have very polished software experiences and offer a plethora of features. So it comes down to personal choice. Now, as for biometrics with the iPhone, we only have Face ID. 
It works well even under low light conditions. It's also more secure than face unlock on Samsung's Galaxy S20 Plus. However, the S20 Plus does come with an under the display fingerprint sensor and it seems to perform better than the one in last year's S10 series. This one's fast and accurate and I had no issues uh, in the time I spent with it. And on the audio side of things, both phones have dual speakers and no headphone jacks. The audio through the iPhone speakers does sound a bit better. The iPhone also has an easily accessible mute toggle to the side. The S20 Plus heads back with expandable storage, but the 11 Pro Max can last longer and deeper underwater like we saw. So this round, sundries, that's go, that goes to the Pro Max. Interestingly, when it comes to the cameras, both these devices have 12 megapixel primary shooters with an f1.8 lens that is optically stabilized. As expected, both of them take excellent pictures under low light. The sharpness, the details in the shadows, everything is top notch. The obvious difference is how these two phones process these images. Samsung has punchier colors and you can see that in the blue skies and the more vibrant greens. The iPhone, it prefers retaining the natural colors of the image. Under low light, both these phones have dedicated night modes. The iPhone 11 Pro Max beats the S20 Plus here. The processing is cleaner. It just means that the pictures shot on the iPhone, like say for example, this building, the sky here, it doesn't have as much noise. I initially thought this was because the S20 Plus might have been exposing the shot for a shorter period of time and cranking the ISO up to compensate. But no, both pictures had the exact same time, uh, same ISO levels and the same exposure timing. It just seems to come, come down to better computational photography on Apple's side. We have brighter pictures with sharper detail and more accurate colors on the iPhone. When it comes to ultrawides, both phones once again sport 12 megapixel snappers. The color temperatures are pretty consistent when compared to the primary sensors, which generally is a good indication of good quality ultrawide sensors. The 11 Pro Max again has an edge with detail as well as dynamic range. Moving on to telephoto, this is where we, we get the biggest difference. At least in terms of specs, the S20 Plus has a 64 megapixel sensor. This isn't a true telephoto option. Instead, Samsung, what they're doing here is cropping in and using some fancy algorithms to get what they're calling hybrid optical zoom. The results are pretty good. Even at 10x, they look decent. Apple, on the other hand, they've gone with a traditional 12 megapixel sensor that does 2x optical zoom. The photos, they come out looking incredibly sharp and well detailed. Zooming into the iPhone photos to match the 3x uh, zoom on the Samsung, at first glance, they seem pretty similar. However, if you pixel peep, the iPhone does have a slight edge again with detail. It is worth noting that both these cameras have optical stabilization, which is why we get such stable blur-free photos. The S20 Plus also has a 0.3 megapixel TOF or time of flight sensor, which is used for depth deduction, like Samsung Apple now gives uh, both options to take portraits with uh, the normal as well as the telephoto cameras. Live focus on the S20 Plus lets us play around with the level of bokeh as well as the shape of it. It's a cool little option to have. Apple, of course, have their own studio lighting effect as well. The selfies, well, here they are side by side, 12 megapixels on the 11 Pro Max, 10 on the S20 Plus, and I feel Samsung does better with the skin tones. When it comes to video recording, the iPhone has a unique capability of shooting 4K 60fps from each of its 12 megapixel sensors. We have slow fees as well. And while not possible through the official camera app, the 11 Pro Max can capture 4K 60fps via all cameras at the same time. Samsung does something similar with their single take option. It uses the rear cameras to take a 10 second video and a separate snap from each of the cameras, giving us a whole host of options to choose from. We can also capture 4K 60fps video from the primary 12 megapixel shooter on the S20 Plus. That said, it doesn't let us change cameras at this resolution, something the 11 Pro Max does let us do. Dropping the resolution to 1080p gives us an option to switch between sensors. Uh, and talking about 1080p, we have the ultra steady option on the S20 Plus that gives us almost gimbal-esque stability when shooting videos. Uh, but the main talking point about the S20 Plus is its ability to shoot 8K video at 24 FPS. Now this is an industry first uh, from Samsung and it utilizes that 64 megapixel sensor. Now this does take a ton of storage and we can even take 33 megapixel stills straight from the footage captured by, this, by the camera because that's how much detail there is. So when it comes to the cameras, both of these phones feature top of the line hardware, while well, Samsung has the edge in terms of features and options. I feel like when it comes to just whipping the camera out and taking a picture, which is what a lot of us do, the iPhone seems to perform better. 
Okay, so finally we get to pricing the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the 64 gig version. It starts at 1,9900 rupees or basically 1,10,000 rupees. On the Samsung side of things, we've got the S20 Plus with 128 gigs of storage and that starts at 74,000 rupees. So is the iPhone 11 Pro Max worth the extra 50%, the extra 36,000? Now here's the thing guys, in most markets, like, let's take the United States for example, the 11 Pro Max, it's priced at $1,100 and the S20 Plus at $1,200, $100 more. Yes, it's the 5G version, but hey, what I'm trying to say here is, if things were similar in India and we were comparing a 75,000 rupee iPhone 11 Pro Max with a 75,000 rupee S20 Plus, then I could say, hey, if you really want the Apple branding, the great all-round cameras, software support for years to come, and of course, if you like iOS, pick up the iPhone 11 Pro Max. But here we have two phones that in most markets, even the brands themselves have agreed that they are more or less on par and they've priced them similarly. But here in India, one of these phones is priced 50% higher. If you're watching this video from elsewhere, if you're somehow looking to choose between a similarly priced iPhone 11 Pro Max and S20 Plus, then I'd say for the aforementioned reasons, you could go for the 11 Pro Max or a faster charging 8K video, the smoother gaming experience, the Infinity O display. If these are important to you, go ahead, get the S20 Plus. Uh, but as things stand today, at, this, at these current prices, the S20 Plus is a no brainer. That would be my pick between these two in India. So that's my two cents on this topic. Do you agree with what I've had to say in this video? If you were to choose between these two phones, what would you choose and why? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, we get to the end of this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on what you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.